What's up everyone? Hope you all have had a wonderful week. Thank you for stopping by for yet another video. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. Should you hire a session player? This conversation happens a lot between me and clients and potential clients, people at coffee. I get asked on the regular on social media. Usually these questions come from people who already have a band or have people that they regularly hire for live shows, etc. And they're unsure of how they should proceed, uh, maybe because they realize that most singer-songwriters most artists that use their own name most there's a ton of people that use session players rather than their live band and this is an extremely common situation and they're unsure of how to proceed usually there's some interesting feelings there where maybe the band wants to record but the artist realizes that they should use session players anyway we are gonna break all of this down today and talk about the pros and the cons of hiring session players and when you should hire a session player and when maybe you shouldn't hire a session player. So today I happen to have a session with one of the best session drummers on planet Earth, Lester Estelle. You guys have seen him on the channel before. We're going to go and we're going to do a session with him for two different artists and then we are going to discuss all of this stuff about should you hire a session player. Let's go. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Lester Estelle, uh, he was in a rock band called Pillar back in the day. He's played with uh, Big and Rich and I think he's played with Little Big Town and he currently plays for Kelly Clarkson um, and he's played on a ton of studio sessions. Google him and watch some YouTube videos of him and I'll put a link, uh, whichever, I think this side, I'll put a link to the last time I was in the studio with him that I had my camera with me. So when I get there, he's never heard these songs before that, that we're about to, to record and so he's gonna listen through them like one time and then he's gonna play them like one time and sometimes he's gonna play it a second time and that's gonna be it and 99% of the time I don't even have to edit his drums in any way shape or form they are as perfect as perfect can get and that is one of the reasons why uh, we hire session players so in an effort to preserve quarantine I brought my breakfast with me. Oh, Krispy Kreme apple pie. Didn't even stop for coffee. Got a little pre-workout right here. So we here at Lester's. There's the man right there. You want to give us a rundown of what you do here yes. and uh, everything? We're at my house. This is my studio here. Um, people send me tracks from all over, all over the world, really. I track it here and, and send it back. This is the drum spot. Very nice. It's about 16 foot tall ceilings. There's, I need to do some construction in here, but it sounds it awesome. It sounds awesome, and I'm really happy with it. I'm a Pearl guy, so I'm endorsed by Pearl. This is what I'm rocking right now. Basically, uh, it's always like a five-piece kit, and if I need to add stuff or take away stuff, I will. Symbols, drums, obviously, have more options here. No, no front head, vintage stuff, vintage stuff. All Just the snares. a couple snare drums. Yeah, I mean, one you gotta or two. Have the, the classic snares and like the stuff that you like, and uh, symbols, all different colors and palettes, whatnot. A drum mm -hmm. kit set up over here for Great. extra, like you know, vibey stuff. Vibey stuff. Yeah, you gotta have it, man. So we just use this today. That is probably a really good point why you should hire session players if you're thinking about it. Like today, I came in with a song and we were working on, uh, he was just gonna play drums on it straight through. And then what ended up happening is we ended up using this 
what do you call this? Like a trash can? I just kit. call it the trash can yeah. vibe kit. So we ended up using this and then putting shaker and toms and just ended up building out a whole percussion set. More layers. More layers, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, stuff like that is a really big deal. Why, if you just uh, took some random drummer into a studio, they're not going to have all this set up and all this extra percussion stuff. And it's really wonderful when you hire a, a real session player and they take the time to build all this extra percussion stuff. So, you. you <laughs> Can I get my check now? That <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, all jokes aside, that's that's a huge benefit. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons why I use him on so much stuff. Okay, so the process when you first get a song in, so you pull it into Pro Tools, and then from what I've seen, you pretty much just make markers for the song. Yeah, I, I get in here and make, just map out the song myself instead of actually, I try not to chart it, chart it, unless I really have to, um, but I'll just map it out. And then, so from there, you pull the song in and you make markers. Make markers. And, and then choose your, like, if you're going to swap snare drums or cymbals. Absolutely. Or... And I mark down everything I do. So, like, I know, like, on this session, I use this kick drum and I use this, you know, whatever. And I put what snare I use just because when, when I hear a track back, I'm like, oh, man, that sounded really cool. Or or what setup I use. Totally. I can remember. And also, I offer MIDI drum tracks. My yeah. little Roland V drum situation. Uh, and I use Superior Drummer. Cool. Um, a lot of people ask for MIDI drums, and I do that as well. So. Excellent. If someone wants to hire you, and they should, how would they go about doing so? You can hit me up, Lester at LesterDrums.com. My website, through my website, LesterDrums.com. Yeah. Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> all Facebook, of the all of them. Y'all hit me up. Snapping it up. So Get I'll, in my DMs. Yeah, slide in those DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll put links to all Lester's, Lester's YouTube yeah. channel and his Instagram. There'll be links in the description for all of his stuff. I wouldn't say this if I didn't truly mean it. I cannot recommend him enough for drums. He plays on almost everything that I do that I hire somebody for. So thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yes. One thing we got to look at before I take off out of here, though, is uh, the, the Holy Grail. I did not expect to come in here and see a Fairchild. Well, you know, I do what I can. It's, I it's mean, for the people. It's for the people. It's not about me. You're just dropping the cash so that way we can have good drum tracks. <laughs> I mean... It's not about me. I mean, come on. If, for those of you who haven't seen the back of one of these, this is hilarious. <laughs> Look at all that. That is what is in the back of a Fairchild. That's silliness. Look at all those tubes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Well, that's a wrap. Uh, session went great. Let's go back to my place finish talking about all the rest of this and discuss whether or not you should be hiring a session player. Okay, so full disclosure, it's actually been a couple days since my session with Lester because I just, I got caught up with a bunch of stuff and uh, didn't have time to finish filming this. So here we are multiple days later. So should you hire session players? This is a conversation that is different for every single person. It depends on your situation and uh, what you're trying to accomplish. So let's start by assuming that you have a band or that you regularly hire players to play with you live. And with that assumption, Assumption, should you hire session players rather than use the people that you normally would use live? I want to start there because if you don't already have a band, then you're going to hire session players, period. It's what you should do, in my opinion, and that's kind of where that part of the conversation ends. But if you do already have players that you hire, or if you actually have a band already, that's where this conversation needs to, to start and uh, to break this down and see if hiring a session player is the right thing for you. So firstly, what is a session player? Well, a session player is someone who primarily plays on sessions in uh, studios and has done so for a long time and has played on many, many, many records. Now, there are session players like Lester who kind of split their time evenly between studio sessions and live work. Lester is Kelly Clarkson's drummer, and he's played with a whole bunch of big acts, and so he's very, very top-notch. I mean, one of the world's best drummers, in my opinion, especially for what it is that he does. So a real session player is just someone who plays on many, many records, and I would probably classify a real session player as someone who 50% or more of their musical work is them playing on records, and they've done so for some length of time. Now, what does a session player have over a live player? 
It's a little bit different discipline. Playing drums is one discipline, and being a live drummer is a second discipline in addition to playing drums, and being a studio drummer is a different discipline in addition to playing drums. And so even though dr being a drummer or a guitar player or whatever is the foundation for being a live player or a session player, they're really separate disciplines that uh, are, have sep different techniques and different tastes and different abilities uh, apply to both. Both of them. So while there are no rules with any of this music stuff, the first thing we should probably talk about is genres. Now there are certain genres where it is extremely common, even the norm, to hire session players. And even if you have a roster of live players, it's still the norm to use different people for the studio than it is for your live show. So I made a list with lots of notes, and so I'm going to read this off because there's, there's no way I'm going to actually remember this. So in my opinion, it's very common for pop and pop rock and most all country genres, pop country, rock country, southern rock, traditional country, um, singer-songwriters, uh, hip-hop, rap, soul, I'm sure there's some I'm forgetting. It's very common for those genres to hire session players even if you as an artist already have players that you take on the road with you or that you use live in the, within those genres, it's very common and pretty much the norm to hire session players for your studio sessions. And then you kind of get more into the band oriented stuff where it's not an artist name, it's a band name. And then you start uh, getting into like, we're in a band together and, and like these these bands are a team and they kind of come together. So as soon as you get into like Americana and funk and rock and hard rock and metal and bluegrass. Um, so as you get more into band oriented groups, it's more common for the players in the band to do the session. But even within those genres, it's becoming extremely common to start hiring out session players. And the point is a couple things. Here's what you gain with a session player versus with live people who are in on the session. One is their musical tastes. Real session players, real accomplished session players are gonna play what's right for the song every time without even thinking about it. It's part of what they're trained to do is play what's right for the song. In addition to that, usually their level of polish is just a, a level above a live player. And so what this means is you can usually spend far less time in the studio because it takes them less time to record a song. The session that you just saw with Lester, we did three songs in that session for two different artists. And if we had not been filming any video stuff, I would have been there for a total of 25 minutes to record three songs. And so, you know, in a, he's a perfect example. And most, all my session players, I, I use all A-list session players for everything that I do. And all these session players pretty much operate the same way. When I go into Lester's place, we sit down and we listen to this. He hears the song for the first time when I walk in there. We listen to the song once and he drops markers into Pro Tools and uh, that is his structure and he watches the, the cursor on Pro Tools scroll by as he's playing. And then as we're listening to the song the first time, if there's any particular things that I want him to do, I want double time here, I need to stop here, I need a look out got here. If there's any real specific things that I definitely want, then we'll discuss it at that time. And outside of that, it's open to his interpretation. A lot of times he plays the song one time and it's perfect. There's no reason to edit anything. Uh, there's no tweaking that needs to happen one single time through a song. He's only heard one other time before. And so that's one of the big advantages that hiring a real session player gives you is, is the speed at which they get it done, which time is money. So the speed means it's usually cheaper to hire a good session player than it is to use someone who's not used to playing in the studio or who is not a real session player. That time that they save you actually saves you money by paying them to play on the song. Now, none of this is in an effort to, to diss on any live players because they're fantastic live players. My point is just, it's a separate discipline. Just being a good musician doesn't mean you're a good session player. And it's a separate discipline. And if you are interested 
interested in being a, a session player, you should absolutely start recording as often as you can and build up a library so that way you can show people the, the songs that you have recorded on. And this is in no way an, a, a discouragement to anyone trying to get into the session world, but this video is directed at artists that are considering hiring session players or that maybe have a group of people that normally play the shows with them and they're considering hiring session players instead. And I would say that if you're considering it, if it's even a question, I would encourage you to hire session players. Now in terms of picking the session players, picking the right players for your song, I would encourage you to work with a producer who uh, has some level of success, who has a success rate, and usually any producer worth working with has a roster of session players. They know a bunch of people that play on records and that's what they do. And so like when an artist comes to me and uh, we discuss the vibe that they're going after, the, the goal for the song and their budget, and then I pick all the session players and I'll let them hear, I'll let the artist hear any session player that I'm gonna choose for the song, but I will pick all of the session players. And so that way the artist comes to me and they don't need anything other than their song and a budget and I will take care of all the rest as a producer. And any producer in my opinion worth working with would do the same thing. And so that's something that you wanna look at. If you're interested in hiring session players, I recommend that you go through a producer to do so rather than trying to do so on your own. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe tab. Give me a thumbs up on this video and drop me a comment. I truly appreciate you sticking around all the way to the end. It really means the absolute world to me, so thank you, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.